starts right now. Tonight on the night beat, how San Antonio hospitals are staying prepared in the event of an active shooter. And what does healing sound like? A San Antonio church choir offering comfort to families affected by the tragedy in Uvalde. We're going to hear their experiences tonight. But first, more record challenging heat on the way for San Antonio, and that trend will not stop over the coming days. So let's head on right over to meteorologist Adam Kasky. All right, Adam, so we know it's going to be hot. The question is how hot? Well, hotter than what we had today, and today was a record 101 the high temperature. That's a new record by one degree, and that was a long standing record set back in 1917. As we get into tomorrow, I think we'll be about three, maybe four degrees warmer than what we had today. Look at the readings right now. Still 91 in San Antonio, 92 Hondo, as warm as 95 in Del Rio. And as I said, tomorrow is going to be even hotter than today. We have a heat advisory in effect for the entire weekend, both Saturday and Sunday. During the afternoon hours, the peak heating, of course, the humidity is going to play a role. We'll tell you how hot it's going to get, how hot it's going to feel, and break it down for you across the area coming right up. Adam, thank you. You know, whenever Adam tells you about record high temperatures, you're not going to be the only one cranking up the AC, and that's exactly what the state is worried about. ERCOT expects power demand to top out at almost 76,000 megawatts. To put that into perspective, that's expected to happen around 6 o'clock tomorrow night when temperatures are forecast to peak at 104 degrees. That 76,000 number would be a record. ERCOT's previous record of 74,820 megawatts was set in August of 2019. We asked ERCOT and CPS Energy about the projected spike in demand earlier this week. Now, CPS is saying that its facilities are ready, and ERCOT says that it expects to have, quote, sufficient generation to meet the forecasted demand. And you also have to be ready. This weekend, you're going to need sunscreen, shade, lots of water. Heat-related illnesses like heat exhaustion and heat stroke are no joke. Both come with symptoms, things like cold, clammy skin, dizziness, fainting, headaches, nausea, sweating. Heat stroke symptoms also include a high body temperature, confusion, and damp, dry, hot, or red skin and a fast pulse. But you can avoid all that if you stay hydrated and out of the sun. You need to drink about a gallon of water a day. If you're already thirsty, you're dehydrated. All right, here's an idea. Go to a splash pad. Yes. San Antonio has a lot of them. They're very cool. They're going to come in handy considering more than half of the city's outdoor pools are closed. Right now, they are only open on weekend afternoons, but starting Monday, several pools will start their weekday hours. We have a list of pools and cooling centers you can visit in Bear County. Just visit our website, ksat.com. So firefighters are saying that triple digit temperatures and high winds made things really difficult at a double house fire in West Bear County. There was a fire and an explosion around 330 near Water Lily Way and Blue Water Cove. Now three people inside the two story home were able to get out of the home safely. But you know, we're going to show you the home in just a second. It was gutted. She didn't know how it started. All she said was that uh, her daughter heard a loud pop or a bang of some sort and that's when she uh, went to investigate on the second floor and she saw the flames and got out. So we know that another person also got out safely out of the second home. Firefighters say that home has about a hundred thousand dollars in damages. What did and didn't he do? Last night on the night beat we told you about Uvalde CISD Police Chief Pete Arredondo breaking his silence and talking about the police response at Robb Elementary. Tonight, we are hearing from the reporter who interviewed him. Today on the News at 6, we spoke with James Balagan. He's the political reporter at the Texas Tribune. In the article, Balagan writes, Arredondo was devastated by the events. He also says the chief is trying to show his team did the best they could that fateful day. He will still have to answer more questions. There's no doubt about that. But I think from his perspective, he's trying to show people what his um, why he did the things he did. And he says he's very proud of the law enforcement response and they did the best that they could under the situation. And there are some who take issue with that. You can watch the full interview with James Badagan right now on KSAT.com. And while we're on the subject of Rob Elementary, as far as the future of that building, what's next? Well, school district leaders have made it very clear that no student will ever return there. So Uvalde CISD is asking the community what it wants to do with the building. Some people don't want to tear it down. 
Others think that it should be transformed into something that'll help that community heal. Tearing it down is kind of uh, extreme, I think, because it's, uh, unless they're gonna build a new school there, which I don't see if that accomplishes anything. I just hope our community can come for together and, and figure out how to, how to move forward. School district officials haven't said when they're going to begin gathering input from community members, but right now that school is just a temporary memor memorial site. You know, today was Eva Mireles' funeral. She was one of the two teachers killed during that shooting at Robb Elementary. Her family says that she loved the outdoors and CrossFit. She also loved spending time with her dogs. You can read more about Mireles and the other victims right now on KSAT.com. Remember their names. Well, it said music soothes the soul, but how about broken hearts? Choir members from several San Antonio churches and schools have traveled to some of the victims' funerals. Tonight, you're going to meet some of those singers. So you're not going to see or even hear their performances because our cameras haven't been invited to the funerals. But the singers shared their experiences with the night team's John Paul Barajas. It just brought me to tears. It's the toughest job these women say they've ever had. It's surreal. I mean, especially when you do a lot of funerals, you know, we're seasoned, and then you realize this, this, how different this one is. They're among the singers from roughly 10 San Antonio churches and schools who have performed at funerals of several Uvalde victims. Today, they performed Wind Beneath My Wings for Rob Elementary teacher Ava Mireles. It was a really special, I'm very proud to have honored the family's request. They're devastated. The town, the city is devastated. The choir made its first appearance at the Healing Mass last month with President Joe Biden in attendance. Since then, they've performed at three funerals, including services for Amory Joe Garza, Jose Flores Jr., and today's services for Mireles. The Rob Elementary teachers and staff were there in their school shirts. And I, I just kept thinking to myself, how many funerals have they been? How many times have they worn that shirt? Each service brought a wave of emotions, heartbreak for the families and the Uvalde community. But the women say they're honored to help them heal with the power of music. When you sing, you pray twice. Um, and there is there is something magical about music. To be able to bring a modicum of comfort or peace to, to someone is is it's, it's overwhelming. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Two other news on the night beat. A man accused of forcing his way into a woman's home and sexually assaulting her is now in custody. According to the Bear County Sheriff's Office, 29-year-old Anthony Bonacini sexually assaulted a 54-year-old woman at her apartment in late April. Sheriff Javier Salazar says the victim told investigators that Bonacini was staying at a unit next door. On Tuesday, investigators identified Bonacini as the suspect. They say they tested his DNA and that it matched the DNA found on the victim at the crime scene. There's one in 69 sextillion chance that this is that, that, that anybody else could have this same DNA. So basically with proof beyond a doubt that this is the suspect involved. That suspect now facing charges of sexual assault and burglary of a habitation with intent to commit a felony. Sheriff Salazar says there could be other victims. If you have any information on this case, you can call BCSO at 210-335-6000. Now to your money. You're going to need a lot more of it to get the stuff that you just need. New numbers from the Labor Department, not too good. The Consumer Price Index for May is up 8.6% from just a year ago. And this is really across the board because gas prices are up a whopping 48 percent. Groceries up nearly 12 percent. Rent, car prices, medical care. Yeah, all that stuff is up. You know that. We spoke with Trinity with a Trinity University economics professor, David McPherson, who says that that's one reason the Fed is going to raise interest rates higher and faster. And as for a recession. The odds of, of avoiding recession have to be low. I mean, the Federal Reserve uh, has not had a good track record of uh, doing this soft landing uh, that people talk about where you gradually reduce inflation without causing a recession. Uh, more often, it's a hard landing. So is any news coming out of the Consumer Price Index good? Yeah, David says no.
Now for a look at your headlines in your Nightbeat News Flash. Tonight, San Antonio police investigating a deadly stabbing outside a bar. It happened around 2 this morning at Deal Sports Bar and Grill near Loop 1604 in Chase Hill. That's on the northwest side. SAPD says two men attacked two other men while they were leaving that bar. One man was stabbed and killed. The other was knocked unconscious. Witnesses told police the attackers left in a white Dodge truck. Here's one last thing foreigners have to do when they come into the U.S. and that's take a COVID test. Starting this Sunday, U.S. bound air travelers don't have to get tested. It's something they've had to do since January of last year. The Biden administration says the rule isn't necessary based on current science and data. The CDC says it will reassess its decision in 90 days. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. Now coming up, a baby missing since the early 80s was found this week, but the investigation not over. What police are looking for up next. And plus, how San Antonio area hospitals are planning in case of an active shooter in the wake of what happened in Tulsa. That story coming up after the break. Hoping for the best, expecting the worst. So many of you feel uneasy after the recent string of mass shootings around the country. And some of you are even asking, what if it happened here? The night team's Patty Santos took that question to leaders at the South Texas Medical Center. A school, a grocery store, and a medical facility. They are all public places that have seen deadly mass shootings in the last month. Now Bear County agencies are on high alert. After the Tulsa incident, uh, we did uh, amp up the training. This Roy Alston, now. VP of Security for Christus Health System, says new training prompted by recent events start next week. We're going to start teaching it more small group, one-on-one, -on -one, so people can fully understand where they work is this is how you respond. In an emergency, UT Health San Antonio Chief of Police Michael of Park says seconds. all Bear County law enforcement agencies will be on the same page. We have the same radio system and communication capabilities, so it does not delay the response because we see that time is so critical. Uh, when you're dealing in, in potentially life and death issues. In recent weeks, Park says he has reevaluated the campus response techniques and compared notes with surrounding law enforcement agencies. Collectively as a group, we take the, the, the role of the safety of our community extremely important. Yearly, more than 2.2 million patients visit the Health Sciences Center alone. Agencies depend on a shared alert system and high technology surveillance to be where law enforcement can't. Both Parks and Alston says visitors should also know they're expected to run, hide, or fight. If you hear uh, gunshots, run. Get out of the building, get out of the way, um, so that way you don't become a victim. Hide if you can, run, and be ready to fight if you must to save your life. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Now making headlines tonight, a baby who disappeared more than 40 years ago has been found alive and well in Oklahoma. She was known as Baby Holly. Her parents were killed outside in the woods near Houston in 1981. And since then, no one had heard of her until this week. Investigators found her. She's 42. She's got five kids. Earlier this week, Holly's aunt and grandmother saw her for the first time on a video call. When I looked at her, I remember the times that I used to hold her in my arms, you know, and I just wanted to hug her. I just wanted to get up and hug her so bad. And hopefully they get to reunite soon. Right now, investigators are focused on finding the people who kidnapped Holly and killed her parents. They say that Holly's adopted parents are not suspects in this case. What a mystery. All right, live cam right now, 89 degrees out there, feeling much better than it did earlier. But <laughs> I mean, how do you prepare for back-to-back -back 104s? Water, 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 a lot, lot of water. water, shade as well. And, uh, you know, the usual summertime routine for us is just coming a lot earlier than yeah. usual and a record breaking territory again for this time of year. I mean, here's our forecast 104 tomorrow and Sunday, then down to 101 on Monday, Tuesday, back into the upper 90s. So we will trim back the temperatures a little bit. Take a look at our count now. We're up to 10 100 degree days so far this year. That's already one above the annual average. To put it in perspective, though, the record is 59 
100 degree days. That was back in 2009. Second place was 57 in 2011. Third place, 41 in 2013. All right, here's a big picture. The upper level high has centered itself a little farther to the west, but still significantly influencing our weather. And in the days ahead, it's going to be pushing eastward pretty much right over us for the weekend. And then we get into next week and it slides over the eastern seaboard. So basically over the southeastern US and parts of the east coast that should alleviate some of its pressure on us and give us slightly lower temperatures back down into the upper 90s. Also, the steering flow aloft comes off the Gulf of Mexico. So if we could just see a little shortwave, a little disturbance, a little ripple in the upper level flow, maybe we could kickstart a shower or two. But uh, right now there aren't any really promising indications of that. Maybe a few coastal showers, that's about it. I do want to point out, if you are susceptible to the African dust and you've got a sensitive respiratory system, Sunday and into next week are what you need to look out for. Right now it's all over the Gulf and into the Caribbean. By Sunday we'll start to see a little a light amount of that dust moving in a little bit of a haze from it, but it should get a little thicker, especially as we get into Tuesday. You look up and down I 35, we could have some moderate amounts of the dust in the air, and it's basically going to be present at varying degrees throughout all of next week. So something just to keep in the back of your mind. If it doesn't affect you, then you'll just notice extra haze in the sky and uh, extra colorful sunrises and sunsets. They get a little more of an orange reddish glow to them. 88 right now, dew point is 73. It's sticky, so it feels like we're up to 96 and the humidity will be playing a role this weekend. We'll get into the heat index forecast in just a moment. First temperatures, 88 Eagle Pass now, 88 Pleasanton. I pointed out earlier, Del Rio still at 95 degrees. For the most part, right near 90 or upper 80s, 89 Converse, 87 in Rio Medina. Tomorrow morning, we start the day mid 70s. Pretty typical. We'll start the day right off the bat with sunshine and then boost to 104. We're expecting the official reading in San Antonio, but some parts of the west side and south side of town, about 105, even Castroville, Divine 105, Converse 103, Canyon Lake 102. It's going to feel nice in the water. I'll tell you that comfort at 102 and all across the board. We're looking at triple digit and above Del Rio about 106 and Sunday's basically going to be the same a carbon copy air temperatures right up around 104 a little bit more of a breeze on Sunday out of the south at 10 to 20 miles per hour so at least we'll have that but when it comes to the humidity and the feels like temperature there will be a, a few hours in the afternoons Saturday and Sunday where that heat index that feels like could get up to 107 to 108 for some locations. So something that we need to keep in mind then that drop off into next week. So dangerously hot this weekend. Flag day looking good, partly cloudy and hey, down to 99. That's on Tuesday. All right, Adam, thank you. All right, game four and this curry was hot. He yes. was hot. I mean, what left foot injury, right? He was he Look, carried the team. Yeah, looked totally healthy. I mean, Steph Curry tonight shot 53% from the field overall, 50% from three-point range, topped 40 points, and helped Golden State pick up a win they really needed. Plus, in high school baseball, Reagan won by shutout in the 6A state semis. We got those highlights coming up. Golden State looking to win in Boston tonight and tie the NBA Finals at two games all. First quarter, Steph Curry turns it over and Marcus Smart will feed Jason Tatum for three and Boston leads 11 to four. Warriors come back though. Curry makes a 30 foot three and the Dubs go on top 23 to 18. Boston led 28 27 after one thanks to this Grant Williams three ball. Second quarter, Derek White spins and he makes a tough layup and he gets fouled. Free throw was good and it's 49 42 Boston. Celtics led at halftime 54 to 49. Third quarter, cue up Derek White for a corner three to make a 71 65 in green and white. But here come the dubs. Curry from downtown is good, tying this at 7 3. 73. Curry's upset because he feels he got fouled. The Warriors led 79 78 after three. Fourth quarter, Marcus Smart beats the shot clock buzzer for three and the C's lead by four. Warriors respond. Curry makes a 12 foot floater and it's 97 94. Golden State. Curry scored a game high 43 points and the Warriors win 107 97, tying this series at two games. Also, the finals will shift back to Cali for game five Monday night at eight here on KSAT 12. The Warriors have taken back home court advantage.
For the first time since 2018, the Reagan Rattlers are playing at Dell Diamond in the UIL State Tournament, facing Rockwall Heath in the Class 6A semis. Rattlers strike first in the top of the second. Luke Sasser knocks a base hit through into right. Cole Tabor rounds third, and he beats the throw home for a 1-0 Reagan lead. It's 2-0 Rattlers in the top of the third with a runner on third. Tegan Peoples drives a base hit into right center field. Britton Moore scores the cap of two run inning. Reagan goes up 3-0. Hawks load up the bases in the bottom of the third with a chance to get back into it, but eight and Coleman induces a ground out to third baseman Ashton Beard to end the threat. Reagan wins by the final of 6-0, advancing to the 6A championship game tomorrow for all the marbles. You know, just went out there, stayed focused against a really good team, and, you know, the whole, guy, the whole team worked behind me tonight, and we were swinging it well, and it was just an overall great night for everybody. They, they've done it all year, regardless of the situation. They have done what it takes to win baseball games, and, and you know, they got one goal in mind, and that, that's to win tomorrow at 4 o'clock. This is what we started out with back in August in, in offseason and stuff, is to get to Round Rock and, and win a state championship. Reagan, who knocked off the defending state champs, will face South Lake Carroll tomorrow at 4 p.m. for the Class 6A Baseball Championship. College baseball now. Texas playing at East Carolina. Top of the first, Longhorns' Murphy Staley. Some acts of two-run home run to left field, scoring Douglas Hoda the third. And Texas strikes first in the Super Regional 2-0. Staley had two homers and three RBI. Bottom five, Horns down 7-2, to two, and Staley shows off his defensive skills running toward the right field line where he makes the catch while tumbling over the wall, and he held on to the ball. Man, that was nice. Top eight, Horns down three when Silas Ardwan hits the ball to right center where it bounces over the wall for a ground roll double. Austin Todd scores from second, and UT is down two. They'd score one more run via a ground out to trail 8-7, to seven, but the Pirates pull away after that, and they beat Texas in game one 13-7. So Texas faces a must win tomorrow morning at 11. The Big 12 will have a new look following this coming season because Cincinnati, Houston and UCF will officially join the conference on July 1st, 2023. After reaching an agreement to leave the American Athletic Conference, the league and schools announced today, Cincinnati, Houston and UCF will each pay 18 million to leave the American. After Oklahoma and Texas announced they were bolting for the SEC in 2025, the Big 12 wanted to get these three American schools in for the 2023-24 campaign. BYU is set to join the Big 12 as well. Now, after this news broke today, UTSA Athletic Director Lisa Campo said they intend to join the American Athletic Conference July 1st, 2023. Tiger Woods has joined an exclusive club after the break. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Las Vegas Raiders wrapped up a mandatory three-day minicamp yesterday under first-year head coach Josh McDaniels. Second-year safety Trayvon Merrick is looking to build off a solid rookie campaign at 55 total tackles, one interception, and six passes defensed. Smith of Valley Great was asked what he's trying to improve on this season. Just, you know, footwork, really. Just um, improving my footwork, improving my hands, um, and then, you know, just – Conditioning, just trying to stay at the top of my conditioning peak as I can, um, and then just come in every day, lift weights, try to get stronger, um, and then just the mental side of it, just trying to learn the game. Merrick, a second round pick from TCU, started all 17 games for the Raiders last season. And how about this? Tiger Woods has joined Michael Jordan and LeBron James as athlete billionaires per Forbes. They estimate Woods' net worth is at least $1 billion bucks and say that less than 10% of Tiger's net worth comes from earnings on the golf course. So all those endorsements paying off. Congratulations to him. I know. <laughs> billionaire. 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 We'll be right back.